All right, welcome everybody to Artful Tuesdays. My name is Kirk, and I have with me Luke Travers. And hooray! We're gonna hooray! And we're going to select a painting. This bad boy right here. <laughs> so we're going to select a painting for me. This is a show for me, and that's it. So you don't have to show up and watch. I don't care. Uh, I'm just kidding. I hope you watch. Private consultation, $300 just private an hour. Uh, I'll be expecting a check in the mail. I just learned that now. Uh, totally worth it though. But yeah, and I'm only kidding. This is this is literally what I'm trying to do. So by the end, we'll talk about an actual painting for me to put there. But what we hope you will learn by watching this and by participating, by putting some comments and telling us what you um, might like is how to select artwork for your own home. What kinds of artwork do you like? What, you know, posters versus you know, um, magazines that you cut out or, or book covers or, or, you know, random wall art that kind of ties the room together or modern art versus classic paint, you know, whatever you want to do. I mean, not whatever, because, you know, there's crazy stuff probably you shouldn't do, but there's a whole world of, you know, decorating your home. How do you make those decisions? What, does, what should you think about? Can we, you know, help change your mind and maybe inspire you to put something a little different? We'll find out. So Luke, before we get into this, one of the things that inspired me and, you know, uh, a painting that I've loved and that you've helped me enhance mm, is actually on mm. my wall. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a few minutes. It's not here. It's in another room, but I'll show it to you later. Um, and so you're really good at this and you've really inspired me to put more paintings in my Aww. life and do more Aww. stuff like that. And I think more people need that in their lives. And you, part of the inspiration today is not only this ugly blank wall, but also a beautiful book that you have coming to everybody in the world. We all have to go get this book. It's really important. And why don't you show us the beauty here? Stories in paint. Is it like in, in Earth's orbit? It's its own globe. In, <laughs> yes, in that's right. Region. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and actually, it is, it is, it's all about Leonardo. So all the backwards writing you see on the screen there is actually <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah. So it's called Stories in Paint. You, you can order it now, correct? No, you no, cannot you order it now. Cannot order you, it yet. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, you can go to my website. It, you can go. You, well, you've got you. You, you were <laughs> like the, the Kickstarter program and got that all launched. But Kirk, can I tell you something? Tomorrow Please. morning, I'm expecting this truck that came from Boulder, Colorado to show up at my front door. And I'm going to have like a ton of book, literal tons of a ton of book books. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'm going to start shipping out to the Kickstarter folks, but then I'm going to start taking pre-orders. So if you're watching this now, you can go to touchingtheart.com and you can sign up to get notification about the pre-order. You might even get there if you're watching this in a day or two and see a pre-order page. And officially for the general public and non-Kickstarter folks, the book will be shipped to you and available early June. But those yeah. of you who are uh, who supported me through the Kickstarter, you'll be getting your books in a week or mm -hmm. so, or two, or something like that. And what's but the website? Touchingtheart.com. Touchingtheart.com. Okay. So go to touchingtheart.com. All one word. Um, order the book. It's a it's fifty paintings. It'll help you with tours, with experiencing art with friends. It'll be the best coffee book table of the next five years. And then I'll write one and that'll be the next best one. How about oh, that? Oh, <laughs> so I'll okay. give you five years we'll, we'll and then I'll write, and we'll, we'll compete every five years for the rest of our lives. That's Who great. could get the best coffee table for everyone in the world? But I love coffee tables. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think they're great coffee tables, coffee table books, <laughs> because it, it just like the similar thing of these artworks is it expresses yourself to yourself and to friends and people that you invite over, right? Which is part of what you're doing when you select all the things in your life is you're showing people who you are and you're showing yourself who you are. Okay. So, um, so that's the book. Uh, Mary Aline says, cool with a super chat. we we'll always love Mary Aline. Uh, thank you so much for the support and everyone else, Robert and Apollo. Welcome to the chat. If you guys have ways that you select paintings for your home or a painting painting that you've selected for your home, write it in the comments. I'll try to read some of them because that's our goal today is how to select art for your home. Okay. Let's get started. Um, Luke, how do you select art for your home? <laughs> Just give it to us and let's, let's end the Kirk, chat right now. <laughs> Kirk, is, is this a safe space? This is, can oh I, no. Can yes. I admit something? Yes. Let's hear it. Kirk. I have a lot of no 
no art walls. I have I have walls that have no art on them, and I I have not selected artworks for those walls. And uh, and you know what, Kirk? A lot of the artworks that I I enjoy, I I wouldn't put them up on my walls. Mm. So what an interesting way to start. Th- this th- I know, right? So goodbye. Is- All right, everybody. This has been a great <laughs> show. Uh, thank you. We don't need to put art in our wall because the art man said don't put art in his wall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> well, but I, so I think part of it, so, so let's ask, let's dig into why you don't, um, or why you haven't. I mean, you obviously have art behind you. I do have art behind me. Yeah. And you now you have more art in your life than I think even an art enthusiast does in general, right? That's my sense because it's your job, right? It's, it's your job. You do this all the time. You're surrounded by art. You, I mean, I don't. I think it'd be bizarre for anybody to think you don't love art just because you don't have a gallery at home, right? Like that's silly. Just you, yeah. You have art in your brain. <laughs> like I've it's, got art it's coming out brain, of your pores. But I'm wondering. I think I've been thinking about this because people have often asked me, Kirk, Luke, can you make some recommendations for what art to put in, <laughs> in my home? Can you come over to my house and <laughs> and tell me, you know, what art I should have here? And one thing I realized is I'm not much of an interior designer. Uh, yeah. I am more of a novel reader. And I think a lot of the experiences that I have with art are those where I step out of my home and go to someplace special where I'm experiencing the art fully immersed in it, kind mm. of out of the, my routine, like you go to a movie. So that's the museum. The art museum is where I go too often or, or a, church or uh or or somebody else's home really nice home that has art in it or something or other i found that (laughs) yeah i've been a lot of the art that i love that i personally bond with that means a lot to me i wouldn't want to see it every day i wouldn't want to be around it every day i it doesn't it's not like you know i've been thinking about music and how there's some pieces of music that i do want to have every day like when i go for a run i've got my my aha playlist, you know, 80s rock music, 80s pop music. I listen mm-hmm. to that uh-huh. or in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, Pet Shop Boys, things like that. Or in the mm-hmm. mornings, I, I like to listen to like Bach or, or Mozart to kind of get me into the flow of the mornings. But I love Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto, but I'm not going to listen to that every day. I don't want it to be part of the routine of of my day. And so I find the same thing with the visual arts. A yeah. lot of artworks, I don't want them to be part of the routine of my day because they are too momentous, too grand yeah. an experience. And it might even desensitize you to it. It might desensitize me to it. Yeah. Like the, so, oh, yeah. Well, well, I, I was going <laughs> to, one, one, when we were talking before the show, it's like prepping for this, one example. I gave, cause I had never thought of it that way. And I, I think that's a good point is, you know, we're going to talk about how to select, how to actually do this, but we're starting with the negative. <laughs> um, so don't, don't tune out. But <laughs> one thing that like, I hadn't thought about is like, yeah, that's true. And I was going through stuff. Like I don't, there's one painting and there's a lot of paintings like this that are just um, horrifically beautiful is one way to put it right there. They're, they're haunting and they're wonderful and they're, they're nat- you know, their splendor. And yeah, I wouldn't want them there. And, there, and there's one like where a woman is uh, that I like actually to see at a museum where a woman is holding, gripping a man's head, has a sword in his throat, and she is sawing basically through his, his head as he is going in the most grotesque, horrific, haunting my nightmares look of any horror movie, A24 Studios. Ain't got nothing on this painter. You and, mean you don't have that in your dining room? And I do not have that. Like, I don't want to see that every day. I wake up and it's like, oh, yeah. it's like, oh my God, I'm going to have nightmares all the time. Like, I don't even know. What, I'm sorry I made that noise. Um, but it was, noise. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, uh, yeah. So I think like there's, it's true, but I still find it, some of those types of things beautiful. I, I, there's, and that's, that's obviously the extreme example, right? There's other ones that, mm-hmm. like you're saying, uh, they they evoke certain kinds of emotions that I don't necessarily want all the time. I want them for special occasions. Um, there's something else I'm looking for for my home. So the the point I think we're trying to get to is like, what are the standards 
and methods of choosing what, what you do want. Cause there's obviously paintings. I think you can select for the home. Yeah. That's, and that's you know what? I, I'd like to bring in some. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you got a Luke. I love you. Super chat. So <laughs> um, I'm going to say I love you too, you whoever you are. <laughs> it was, this was Kindred Amy. So Kindred Amy, uh, Luke loves you as <laughs> oh, well. So you I got love a super you, chat. <laughs> so you got a super chat from that. I had to interrupt you for an, an I love you. Well, of worthy course. of an interruption. Uh, yes. <laughs> so so no, no, continue. Well, I want to I want to like trigger my art history brain here and bring a little bit of background historical perspective on the idea of integrating <laughs> art into your home um is that does that work for is that von pseudo intellectual voice <laughs> uh, it sounded kind of like austrian <laughs> okay well here's here's where i want to go i want to talk about because art in different homes or different places is natural we, Throughout most of history, art wasn't in museums. Museums are more like a late mm -hmm. 18th mm -hmm. century, 19th century, and especially 20th century idea. And all these artworks that we see in museums were not there to be made to be in museums. They were there to be made for homes. They were there to be made for palaces and so forth. And I was thinking to myself, okay, art within a certain location, and how does the location, whether it's a home or a business or a church, how does that affect the way you experience it. And I was trying to think back to my own experiences. And Kirk, you know, I love these revelations of memory where you think mm. and you said, oh, I remember that. And oh, wow, what a memory to have because this sheds light on a lot for me. And I want to share with you, Kirk, if I may, the mm -hmm. most powerful experience I had with art within a location. And this art might surprise some folks. Okay. Yeah. What do you do? I art tied to location. So the yeah. principle that go, go corresponds with trying to find something for that blank space behind you there and what the function would be for it. So this was when I was 19 years old and I was in Italy and I went to Rome and I stood in front of the home of the Pope, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. And I saw it looked oversized to me from the outside. I hadn't gone inside yet, but it looked like an oversized temple. Then I stepped inside. And it was an assault on the senses, like mm. the most pleasurable assault, gold decoration everywhere. And these massive, massive columns, huge columns. It felt like I was walking into a temple of giants. But the thing that got me was I was stepping into this oversized temple of giants and the giants were there. Mm. I saw these huge statues of prophets, of St. John, of David, of all these, these vibrant living heroes who were there and they were over life size. So the sensation I had was I was walking into the space that was not meant for me. It was meant for these these heroic giants. And I felt so overwhelmed. I remember coming out of St. Peter's and sitting down and putting my head between my legs, closing my eyes and just feeling kind of, whoa, what did I just go through? Mm -hmm. Would you was, like to see a photo? Oh yeah. Oh, this is of the place. Yes. Let's see it. So of course the photo is not going to do any justice. And there's going to be one yeah. thing that I'll point out. That's going to maybe indicate a little bit of, of what I mean by the scale but hopefully what it does is you'll get a sense of you'll get a sense of what I, I was experiencing. So let me share my screen for you here, Kirk. And this is the interior of St. Peter's Basilica. Whoa. Now, I, I'm uh, glad you gave that, which was like a huh. So to give you a sense of the scale you might be able to look at the bottom oh yeah i see it yeah and yeah. see people those are people and then That's imagine crazy. yourself being one of those people and then looking up around you and yeah. being a part of this land of giants now wow. this is the an integration of this monumental space with these monumental sculptures that you can kind of see in the niches in these massive columns yeah and those are right. all larger than life sculptures absolutely for sure huge God. So it's all there integrated to give you this sensation. God yeah. is everything. The heroes of the church are everything. 
yeah. and be glad that you are part of it. Yeah. God. So that is a lot. That'd be <laughs> intense to work there. Like, like imagine working at the Vatican or something like that. Like, man, I, I, I get it. That's definitely like the overwhelm too much perhaps now in that sense though, that they, they, they also have a, like their goal in the artwork of that particular realm is not necessarily to uplift. Is it, do you think, or is it to, sure. or to, to, to make uplift? you see those who are uplifted around you to make you feel like you're small, but you're part of this greater whole oh, okay. that is that's on your great. side. That's interesting. So, so that's not what all churches did. This is a unique one, right? Like from what I understand, I think churches in general, they want you to, to, to make you feel the mag, the magnificence. Well, that of part the of it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that, that I understand. Yeah. I guess like, you know, so like this one, like it definitely makes you, I would imagine I haven't been there, but it seems like it would make you sweep your eyes up Absolutely. and you like uh, irresistibly, you just have to like look up and then you're, you're in that reverent you, you, stance. You might, you might feel a little bit smaller, like, wow, this is, this is too big for me. Well, that you might too, feel, you yeah. might feel that, but um, I think I want to bring up that as that was a really, for me, a personally powerful experience on a, on an extreme scale of the integration of the visual arts with the interior. There are smaller instances, of course, and I, I'd love to share one little tidbit of a smaller experience. Sure. Uh, and this might get into the home. And this is from uh, a friend artist of mine named Ifat. And she, mm. um, she, she looked her. at her kitchen and said, okay, let me paint something for my kitchen. And so she's an artist and she painted, she painted something for her kitchen. And mm. when I saw this, I said, wow, the painting is not something you would say, oh, that's magnificent. It's heroic. It's grand. It's going to be like uh, elevate my soul. Yeah. No, it's, it's not something like that. It's of some, it's a still life. Yeah. But when I saw it within the space of her kitchen, I, I thought to myself, that fits so well. I hmm. want to be in this kitchen with all the quirks that I see because of this painting. Yeah. And what I like to do is I'd like to show you the painting and then I'd like to show you the space. And thank you, Ifat, for letting me okay. uh, share these. So I'm going to- yeah, She does great work share the painting first mm -hmm. and then I'll share where she put it in her home. I like it. While you're doing that, um, I'm going to read Mary Aline's uh, super chat. So set that up. So Mary Aline says, I have Atlas rests on reason by John Wos uh, uh, in my living room. I never get tired of looking at it. I also have Gaetano's AR postage stamp painting. Very nice. Okay. So we're going to talk about like surrounding yourself with certain kinds of values um, that are important mm -hmm. to you. And that'll be it. That'll, so thank you, Mary Lee, for sharing that. So, um, and maybe this is relevant to what you're going to show is uh, something unique about this. Maybe not. So let, let's see. Let's no, be that, surprised. That's a very interesting. We'll bring that back up because I that'll think be that's, that's issue. one okay. aspect of how yeah. to integrate art into your home. And yeah. maybe uh, this might be a, a little bit of something to differentiate it. So here's the painting. Okay. What do you see? What do you see, Kirk? Well, I see press escape or double down, which is annoying, but okay, here we go. Um, well, I see an onion and some knives and I don't know what that is on the parsnip or something, a blender plugged in and it's not completely unzip tied. Right? It's got a zip tie on it. Um, so that's what, I mean, I see, you know, it's a still life. It's showing this moment before you cut into an onion. I take it. Oh, I like that. You're imagining <laughs> what was going, what's going to happen yeah. next. Yeah. The moment yeah, like before you're going to cut into the onion. Yeah. The, the, the meal prep. The and meal it's like prep, a little yeah. kind of cozy kitchen type of situation. Yeah. You know, you got things clumped up together. It, this mm -hmm. is, so I think there's a good contrast to what Marilyn is bringing up. Marilyn is bringing up. These are, um, what does she have? Like, uh, the Nick Gaetano, uh, Atlas shrugged. Gaetano. Uh, yeah. Iron Rand postage stamp. And Atlas Poster Rests stamp. on Reason by John Wos W O S. And those are both these modern. Yeah, those are those are both right. strongly symbolic, meaningful images. Contrasted to this, this is kind of like this is kind of an everyday little homey little type of painting. But when I saw it, and I'll share now the space in which it's located. Nice. Okay. And I, I like the plugs. <laughs> That's awesome. 
So she's like bringing her real life into, this is the essential of plugs, even in my messy plugginess. Here's the essential. Here's the, the important, is the beauty of the plug in this space that allows me to do the cooking I love. You know what? I, 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 Kirk, you've got a way with words. Maybe that's, you should do something with literature, you know? Yeah. Like a literary canon club or something. I'm going to try. I'm doing <laughs> yeah. my best, man. Yeah. That, that's onion murder, RIP. <laughs> that's in, the, that's in the, the chat. Interesting. <laughs> onion murder. Before the murder. That's, that's one way to look at that painting, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So the thing I love about it is exactly like you point out, it's taking some aspect of, of your home life. You know, maybe it's a little, it's, it's humble. It's, it's cozy, but it's something you value your home and you're, you're reemphasizing that with art that, that stresses it. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So I think that's a good transition to one like that, that I have. So I'll share one painting that I have um, that I selected that it is a classical one. So it's classic. And we'll, we'll talk about the paintings. I'm no, choosing. Wait, wait, what are, you, what are you talking about? Selected for what? Another room. So not okay, this so one. We'll talk about this in a it. minute. And so got a I room. think it's related to what you're talking about Yeah. in terms of, although it's not like a homey one, but it, for me, it's like, I put it in a certain room and I had a certain idea of what I wanted it in that room. Because right. what I wanted to happen in that room. That's right? that, that's a, that's great. I'm glad you pointed that out. So I think we got two things going on. We got okay the importance of the room. What's the yes. room that's going to go in? Uh, is, is it a big church? Is it the kitchen? Is it whatever it is? And then the kind of artwork that you'll want to fit in there. So yes. I'm curious, Kirk. You want to share what the room is first, or do you want to share what the artwork is first? Let me share the room or um, the artwork and see okay. if you could guess what uh, is going on and where I would what, where I would. Oh, put this Kirk! And why. You know what you're anticipating for what? for everybody in the audience. I've got a game coming up oh, really? to share with you, Kirk. And you, right. this might be the, along the lines of the game. All right, let's hear it. So here is the painting. Oh, do you, you know you know this painting. I've seen it at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Oh, jeez, of course. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Is that jealous? Yeah. I'm so well, jealous. that means you need a trip to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I need Come a lot on. of trips in my life. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah. So, by the way, Chandler, I, you have a great comment. I did want to read this one. Thank you, everybody, for the robust comments in here. It's better than those big signs that say eat. We're talking about ifats. And I agree. I do want to talk about some things that I, I tend to not like as much in people's homes, um, not to judge people too much, but <laughs> there are certain things I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so here's the painting I chose. This is, it says at the top, obviously, a reading from Homer and um, by Sir Lawrence Alma Tadima. Tadima. Okay, so you know what it's called. So I already ruined it, but what, where would you think this would be and why in my apartment? Okay, so Kirk, um, I've never been to your home. Um, uh, yeah, you might invite me one day. I don't know. We'll have to talk about this later on. Well, I think in a, a month, you're going to be coming to Austin. Uh, am I spoiling stuff? No, Maybe could, we're talking about. Spoil stuff all the way. Yeah, okay, okay, maybe. In June, he's coming to Austin. Yeah, now, maybe. Here, here's something else. Here's something, another qualification, another like, category thing to think about with the artwork. You got the artwork, the content of the artwork, you got the room. And then one more thing I'll throw in is the size of the artwork. Mm -hmm. Because if you told me that this is, you know, it's about, you know, 12 by six, Luke. Mm -hmm. Or if you told me it was four feet by three feet or whatever it is, four feet by two feet, those, I would say two different rooms mm -hmm. for each of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it was something like a smaller version, I might say it'd be something that you would have in your home office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's bigger, then I would say your salon living room. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's pretty. I think that is clear, right? But yeah, that's exactly where it is. And I wanted to have poetry nights and I just thought it would be a great addition. It is sizable. It's not as big as I was, would hope. Um, it's like three feet by a foot and a half or something like that, maybe mm -hmm. a little bigger. Um, but it's a big one. I think I would if I had the choice, I would t take one. I don't know how big the actual one is. I imagine it's pretty big. If, I yeah, mean, it feels it's bigger like than that. Big, feels like a big painting just because they're mm -hmm. late, the way they're laid out, right? And this is what's interesting about looking at digital, right? And looking at, like you could look yeah. at it on like a little phone and it's like, oh, that's you know, yeah. cute. And you go and see it in real life. You're like, holy crap, this thing takes yeah. up a whole wall. 
Yeah. It's a big difference. But anyway, so I think that that's one. Um, and, and you're right. Like, so I have that. Uh, well, behind can, can, my, can we extend ooh. the game a little bit, Kirk? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I th- you're, you're going to, I'm sorry, I interrupted you while you're going to tell me, right. but tell me sure. where it is. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell, I'm going to add, ask you about it. Um, so it's behind my couch. So like when you walk in, so it's basically like the way I would have it set up is like, you know, there's the couch, it's against the wall. There's the painting above it. And then I put up some extra cushy chairs for people to sit in. So hopefully we could have wine and, you know, like five or six people share poetry with each other. Okay. In this can, little living room. And it's a can we play make believe? Uh, yeah. It's all, that's my life is make believe. You're talking about this whole, would, this whole would thing. You, would you put the painting back up just a quick moment? Sure. Okay. With so you, I'm imagining that you've deigned to invite me to one of your poetry salon soirees. And I, and I come up to you with my, uh, um, oh, I'm going to have a glass of wine. And I come up to you and I say, hey, Kirk, thank you for inviting me. And I love this painting. And I'm curious. Why have you put the painting here? What, what do you see in it that makes you think this is the kind of painting I want here? So the short answer is that to some real desire I have, I really do have a desire to read poetry to people. And I love this guy's whole demeanor, right? Like his serious, he's, this is serious work. And he's like, get ready is what I feel in this. And, and I, you know, I always dream of having even four people just completely enthralled by what I'm reading. Um, that's, and I, I think that although one guy seems a little bit like, oh, but I'm just here for the lady, <laughs> but that's fine too. Um, you know, like that's, that's kind of my, my view of it, but I just love the, like the, the guy who's reading, like, this is, this is not just a casual reading. This is like, take your life seriously. When I used to read um, or when I, I, you know, I've read biographies of great poets. And one of the things people would say about Wordsworth is how, when he read, everyone stopped. Mm. They didn't move. They didn't want to breathe wrong. Right. They wanted to hear the great poet read. And he, he was applauded for his beauty of the way he read, Mm -hmm. you know, and it just, the melody that came out of his strong, powerful voice. And I just see that here. And it's always kind of a fantasy of mine to read to people oh, Kirk, <laughs> who want I, to be read to. I, I, love, I love that answer. And thank you for like opening up and sharing a little bit of that, that vision of yours that you're seeing yourself in him and that you're, you've got this artwork in your living room because this is a type of, this is a type of event that you want to have here. And so maybe it serves when you're, when you're by yourself, it serves as a reminder of the things that you want there. When people mm-hmm. are over, it's, it's there as a concretization of this is what we're going to be doing and enjoying together. But it's treating that room not just as a place where routine happens, but where also special event happens. Mm. Yeah. And so that artwork is a kind of uh, a prompt of the memory or a vision of the future of the kinds of special events that will take place in that setting. And so maybe that's a, that's another part. Whereas with Ifat's painting, that's kind of, you know, every day I'm going to cut murder the onions. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> this is a coziness of living and the, a hominess of a routine, but then you've got one there for you in your living room. This is, this is why I have a living room. So I can yeah. have this kind of event. Mm, I like that. This is why I have a living room. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, and this is my living room and it, it's also like what I want one day when I get a house or something like that. Um, and I, you know, I hope to have, I have dreams of the type of house that I would have that would be for places like that. Um, can I share another one? Real yeah. Quick? So this one, I think will be interesting. Now, you know who that is? He looks like he is a very thoughtful, tumultuously thoughtful older man pondering something or other while the dark clouds hover around him, but the light shines on his brow. Ooh, I like the light shining on his brow part. That's, uh, that's important. Um, so can I tell you who it is? Yeah. And what it is? So this is Wordsworth. It's a famous painting of him on Helvellyn, um, like a hill basically in not far from where he lived, I believed. Uh, I don't know. I've never been there, so I don't know exactly where this is. But it's this was like an, a 
you know, he was called the priest of the Romantic movement in Europe, all over Europe. He was thought of as a priest. Um, musicians and composers loved, everybody did. And he was thought of as this man on a hill bringing the word to people in a sense. <laughs> and I just, I, lo I love this stern, thoughtful, deep look that he has. And now guess where this is in my house? Okay. This one might be a little controversial or weird, but uh... <laughs> not weird. Don't, don't get off on the weird part. But <laughs> it's, it's in an audit, like in, May not look like it goes there, but I have my own reason for putting it there. All right. So the options are kitchen, living room, office, garage, bathroom, bathroom yeah, bedroom, bedroom. Um, I would say office, but I yeah. that doesn't sound like it's going. What's your your thinking? Is it? It is. Yeah. It's actually right over my writing desk. So. And, you know, just so we don't spend all time, you know, all day on all of these, because there's other things to cover. Another one that I have there, and there's, I, I wanted like a little, um, this is from Napoleon Hill, the Think and Grow Rich guy, uh, who says having an imaginary council. And oh. I loved that idea. And so like, I, and I thought I could do paintings. So this is Nathaniel Hawthorne. So these guys, I, I love their work. I've read several biographies of each of them. And I've read almost all of their work, you know, especially the major stuff. And, I, you know, I also want Ayn Rand. Um, and, you know, there's a couple others like Homer, Dostoevsky. I'd like, you know, I had those people. I used to have just like thumbtacked of a picture that I printed on a, on a board. And I just had that with me everywhere. And that was part of my inspiration. But I really like this. It's right. Now, it's like, like they're literally looking down at me as I'm writing or, or working in my writing nook. Um, okay. I was like that. So, so Kirk, um, that was Nathaniel Hawk. I, I, I love this idea, and I want to, I want to isolate what is so valuable about what you're saying by contrasting that to um, a precedence in art history. The hmm. place where you see a lot of people up in homes is often in in British high society or French high society, 18th, 19th century. You see a lot of portraits. Now we go to museums today, and I'll, I'll share my screen. I was at the um, I was at the Huntington Gallery and Gardens in Pasadena recently, and um, was seeing something like um, like oh, if you haven't been there, there's so many amazing portraits, and there's one particular room, and I'm going to show a small part here, where you're you've got all these life size portraits. Now these mm -hmm. are all taken away from their original homes, but in the original homes, they would be in the homes of the of the, the family members of the, of the descendants or of, or of the husbands oh, and wives yeah. or who, whomever. Yeah, yeah. And so they would be, you know, you don't have any photography, you don't have any um, iPhones to scroll through the photos. Uh, you, you've got that family, that portrait of that family member. And so this would be your way of kind of staying in touch with them if yeah. they are deceased or if they are long across the sea. And what you've got hmm. is something similar. You don't have family members. You have your council that's there, that's being yeah. that through the artwork animated in it's order to be a presence for you to, yeah. to help you through whatever um, literary struggles you want to to solve. Yeah, I think it's more American. Maybe um, it's more American, yeah. but you know what I'm going to say? I'm saying it's more you, Kirk. Well, it's more me, but I'm just saying, like, I don't come from descendant of famous people, right? Or, or you know, yeah. anything. So. Yeah, like I've, I have seen this kind of thing in well-to-do English and European homes where you'll have like your great-great-great-grandfather who fought at like, you know, Waterloo or something standing regally. And you're like, oh, look, I come from that. I was like, yeah, I don't have, I'm American. Kirk, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're, getting me, you're getting me to thinking, um, okay, who, who would I want to have around me, yeah. portraits around me for my council that I, I lean on? And, mm, you know, you can you can kind of do the mental checklist. OK, uh, what would you know, what would this person say? What would that person say? But if you if you have the portraits of these great individuals that you admire, that you can channel, it's much easier to channel them when you've got them around you. So I think your home. I don't know why you say it was a weird place to have it in your home office. Yeah, I know. It's, maybe it's not that. I mean, the, the weird part is someone in the chat mentioned it's a bit grim and foreboding. Um, and that's true. But when I write, sometimes that's grim and foreboding, yeah, uh, yeah. like the stuff that I write about, there is, you know, there's, there's some bad things happening in the world. And I think there's, it's important to shed light on that. Like I'm not a, 
I'm not a Pollyanna and I'm not somebody who isn't, is afraid of being dark um, when dark is appropriate. And, you yeah, know, I, I'm you all know about inspiration, but sometimes and that's interesting. Kirk, I'm, I'm taking that the, the, for, the foreboding um, Wordsworth and I'm contrasting him to the, the Homer reader and the Homer mm. reader is something that's more on display for, for you, but also for those special occasions when other people are coming in. Yeah. They that Wordsworth, that's you're channeling him. That's more that's something that for personal use. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a it's very interesting me. distinction. And maybe that's one way to think about what art is going to go in what room. What's the function of that room? Is it more private? Is it more public? Yeah. So before we get here, let's talk about some other rooms um, real quick. So my favorite room. No, not really. Uh, so the <laughs> living, I was going to say the bedroom. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's, that, that, really yeah, that's no exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about the bed. So I have a plan for the, I have no paintings in the bedroom, which to me is like metaphorical of my life. It's just that there's not a lot of excitement in the bedroom at the moment. Sorry. I can't um, help you there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but, you know, I have like, there's, there's, you know, I have images of what I want there. And in fact, I'll say, um, I'll give a plug for a gallery that I've had. There's a painting I have. So one thing I, we haven't mentioned before I mentioned the gallery is that all these paintings are inexpensive prints. Like I went to greatcanva.com, uh, fineartamerica.com. And there's all these places, um, jiggly, jiggly.com. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a stupid American. But I, so you could get these canvas prints of famous classic artwork for like, you know, this one was like 280, something like that. And it's a pretty big one. The reading of Homer was like 250, 260. Um, you know, so all these ones like, and you have like a, a classic, amazing artwork in your home. Um, so it's pretty inexpensive. Now you can go more expensive and there's reasons for, we could talk about this while you might want to buy a contemporary, right? Like if I'm going to buy an EFOT original, it's going to cost me. Um, and that's, it should cost you. And so you know, there, there's a gallery that I like and I have in my eye on one. It's Quint Cordaire Gallery or Cordaire.com, C-O-R-D-A-I-R.com. Um, they have beautiful artwork and, you know, I think it's wonderful stuff. It, it is more expensive because it's with living artists and there's something, it's, it's not a print. It's, an, it's basically an original. It's a reproduction. So I'm, I'm, I want to ask you about that, Kirk. But, what does that do for you and if to have... An artwork oh, yeah. that's a print versus an artwork that is an original. Well, one thing. So one painting I have in an odd place as well. Not really. It's just it's on a sidewall. Is this painting that I really enjoy from that I saw? I think at the Getty at first. Uh, Aeneas and Dido, and this is Aeneas meeting Dido, and basically oh. there's a lot going on in the painting. I love classic literature. This is part of it. Anyway, the point is. I didn't like the print that came out and mm -hmm. some of these other ones, I like them. Like they look good, but when they just do not strike you, it's just this, the, the more I'm, I experience art, the more, especially painting and visual arts, um, you get to look at a picture, the best pictures of sculptures that you could ever fa fantasize about. And they don't even come close to the power of standing in front of a life size or a larger than life size painting or picture. And same thing with these paintings is that it just doesn't strike you quite as intensely. Me, I should say, doesn't strike me quite as intensely. Um, even though I really like them, there's, it's just, you know, it's like dulled down. It's almost like dialed down a little bit because it's a print. That's one reason. There's yeah. another reason, but that that's one reason. Oh, well, what, 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 what I'm, oh, okay. I didn't know if you had something you, else to say. Um, you know, so the, uh, the you, other you, reason, when you set up with like a teaser like that, well, the other reason is that it's almost an investment. Like these are not investments. Um, if I invest in Ifat, I'm thinking that, you know, she's going to keep creating art and that, or she does it, that might actually be better to some degree as an investor, because then it's like all her great art is like, um, I got it, baby. Like, you know, but, you know, I'm not saying, you know, Ifat, keep creating. I'm just saying as an investor, you know, it's like, man, if you get an artist and then they're like, I retire and they never paint again, and you have like, you know, some of their good stuff and it's like, it was great. And, you know, it goes up in value, right? It's like, I got the, the last EFOT painting. Um, you know, it's, and so the point is that, you know, with living artists, there's, there's a upside of a long-term investment. That mm -hmm. is, that is mm -hmm. you know, like you have to buy, if you get 
good art. You need you need to buy insurance, dude. Buy like I'm not I don't have insurance on these things. If they go, that sucks. But I'll get another one. You get an e file. You better get some damn good insurance on it. <laughs> so that's my um, that that's one reason. Is it is also and it's more meaningful. Is I guess the third reason because it's an original. I know that it comes from her hand, and it's more directly you know. So there's there's I think more connection with the artist and the artwork that's yeah and you know what i i like that last point a lot because i think um maybe ideally any artwork you purchase from an artist themselves maybe you you get to know a little bit about that artist maybe you've met them maybe you have an interaction maybe maybe you commissioned the artwork from them Mm, but what you but what happens is you you have that artwork has more of a personal bond with you because you have this interaction with the artist. And so it makes it a little bit more. This is something that not only from afar through the centuries that I can connect to Dido and Aeneas, and I saw it at the museum once, but mm-hmm. I, I have a bond with somebody who created yeah. this. Yeah, I, I think that's, a, that's, that's really important. So, so that... That's one reason why I think, you know, so in my bedroom was the whole where we got off topic there. There's it's, one. Painting, it's easy to get off topic in your bedroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's one painting, it, you know, like there's a Cordaire painting. And I don't want to say the painting because I once introduced someone to Cordaire and this painting. And then I went to visit and like Cordaire because I was living not far from there. And this person went and visited and he had bought the painting. <laughs> that I, and I was like, <gasps> And luckily, Wait, you know, so oh, oh, you, do, you yeah, don't want to share the painting. So that I'm you not going to share the painting because I don't oh, want other people buying it. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> sorry. My Go to Cordero.com and buy their art. And if you buy it, great. But I'm not going to tell you my painting. That I have my eye on because it's mine, man. Uh, I don't want people stealing my art. <laughs> but it, and literally he was walking says, oh, out. Oh, I've seen that painting before. Yeah, literally he was walking out with my painting. And I was like, God damn it. Like, and they, like these things, because they're originals, there's limited runs. Uh, uh-huh, so there's uh-huh. only so many of yeah. the original, right? And yeah. again, that goes back to it. Now it's, it's you know, it's, it's somewhat pricey. It's not the most, it's not that pricey, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not $300. I'll tell you that much. So I was like, I ain't telling nobody ever again. <laughs> if it's my art, until I get it, then I'll tell you. Um, so anyway, Maybe that's, that, that's another reason to commission a particular artwork from an artist is yeah. you get something just for you. Yeah, exactly. You get something just for you. And, and the, yeah, I think if you can afford it, it's going to cost more to do that, of course. Okay. Uh, so that was, that was, you set up that whole bedroom scenario just to pull the, the sheets out from the bed and not tell us what the artwork is. <laughs> I'm not going to tell oh, you that artwork, but there's other artworks that I'll just like the theme that I'm going for. Yeah. You know, like there, I want like, um, you know, feminine beauty. I want to be surrounded by feminine beauty. So it is a feminine beauty and sleepiness. I think is important. And I'll say sexuality is another one that'll kind of be implied. And, and, you know, I'm not going to surround myself with porn, but just, you know, like, um, like I really like the painting and the Getty one of my, I mean, it's one that I really love. I would definitely put in my bedroom and it is, um, oh my gosh, Aries and um, um, only oh the goddess of Aphrodite. Mm-hmm. And he, it's at the Getty. And I was, I think, I think it's a Getty one. But, you know, it's, it's he's lifting the, the curtain is there. There's like uh-huh. the dove in the helmet. Um, Aphrodite is sleeping naked next to him. They had just made love. And it's and it's, you know, the idea and it's actually an, called like uh, an allegory of peace. Yeah, I think is yeah. the actual title of the, yeah. the painting, because yeah. it's about how love conquers war in a sense. Mm-hmm. But I just love the whole image and setup and it's gorgeous. And the look on his face, um, you know, of just like, you know, pure pleasure and joy and that kind of thing you know it, that's the kind of thing i would want in my well kirk i'm wondering if, if now might be a good time to introduce you to this this game i've got for you let's do it because we still so, gotta do this oh we will last thing at we the will end. so i'm, I'm gonna share artworks from my book mm. and the one i'm gonna ask you are a couple questions the first one is <laughs> would you want this artwork in your home somewhere or is it something that nope it's yeah. interesting story, insightful, but no. Yeah, there's a couple of years I don't want. In my, but there I you love. go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Second question will be, which room? And we've kind of gone through. I mean, I feel like I got enough spiritual tour of your home already. Mm, let's uh, get started, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we can do parts two, three, and four. Spend all day. <laughs> I got it. Art full, for spirit. sure. 
An uh, expansive spirit, man. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, so, that's a William Shakespeare line. Is, uh, yeah. Okay. So there, there we go. So we got, uh, I, I'm going to ask you next. Okay. Which room would you want it in? Mm -hmm. And of course, why? Are you ready? Let's do it. So some of them you're familiar with, some of them you're not, and I'm not going to provide any information about them. This is just going to be your, your quick glimpse of the artworks. So let's start off with this one. So what am I doing? Am I? Do you want it in your home? Oh. And where do you want it? If you do. How long for the game? How long would you give somebody so they don't spend all day? Oh, how about, could spend how about 10 seconds? Okay. Would I want it and where? Uh, I mean, I would definitely lean toward yes. Um, and probably, probably office. Like I could see that in the office, like working late in the night. Mm. It's kind of what I get. Okay. Um, just as me, uber literal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, let's, can I add one wrinkle? Would you give the artwork a quick title so that uh, we um, kind of get what it is that you're coming? Late nights. What is it? I'm just gonna say late late nights. That's great. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Here's another one. I think you're familiar with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one where like all your your people accuse me of being. <laughs> I'll never forget this one now, because uh, I had a I had I had said she was like a married one, young woman, uh, engaged, and I was accused of oh she's like twelve. No. You, would you want? <laughs> no, I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> would like, you? <laughs> so would you uh, want this in your home? Yeah, hundred percent, thousand. Where? Percent. Uh, pff, probably the bedroom, but because <laughs> it's a beautiful woman looking at you. Right. Um, so that would, I, I think there's another one that has a similar type of feel that from you that I would prefer, but I like this one for sure. Okay. Title for this one. Oh, we, well, this is our first um, surprise by art. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't want to give this one away. Go watch it. Cause I know this mm -hmm. now, but you know, sorrowful man, I'll just put it that way, but I, yeah. I, I could give it an actual title and I won't. Um, hell no. <laughs> I don't want this in my house and I love it and it's wonderful. And it made me cry when I realized it, but it, yeah, I mean, I don't want that sorrow in my house like this. If you had to construct a, a different kind of room onto your home, yeah, to that's what put I was this say. artwork in, what kind of room would it be? I mean, I might put this, um, oh man. I mean, I can see this maybe being in a dedicated little barn that is just for art i don't know <laughs> like i love this painting it's wonderful you introduced it to me it was great great experience um attic <laughs> something i don't see every day uh something i could go up in or a basement yeah if i had a basement i'd put it in a basement and then i could see like oh well uh, as long as that wasn't like my man cave it's it's very depressing right so it's not a very happy all right are you ready for the next one got two more for you okay how about this one? Um, no, but I like it. What, what's your title? Oh, um, what is she holding? I guess, you know, admiring clean, cleaning lady. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, can't, like, I, I think she's like the maid uh -huh. um, and she just cleans something, but she's admiring something of her masters, or, you know, the, her boss. That's my sense. I'm uh -huh. probably wrong, but. I have never seen this one, so this is a good one. So we have to do through a whole new analysis. And, and sometimes the analysis makes me want the painting after I've anal analyzed mm -hmm. it, right? After I've mm -hmm. experienced it a little bit, I didn't see mm -hmm. things in it. Mm -hmm. um, my first sense is I really like it. I just wouldn't put it in my home. Um, Got it. Now, I mean, like if I was in a relationship with a woman, she, she wanted it, I'd be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah whatever you want. Um, okay, so, yeah. I got one more for you. I can see that more. How about this one? Oh yeah, we did this one too. This is our adventurous one. Yeah. Um, I could see this in my kitchen, actually. I don't know why. Like, in, not my kitchen. I'm sorry, my dining room. Um, like mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah, I could. But well, yeah, I could see this one there. I don't know if I would for sure, but I, I'll say yes in um, possibly. Why dining room? room? So. I think this has to do with just a, a subjective upbringing, but in our dining room growing up, my mom always had these like old, like, or not, not old, simple paintings of like Italy and just places to go travel. Mm. Uh, and so I, for some reason, just dining room and travel, even though they have nothing, you know, eating in different places, 
this is completely separate from that because it's obviously those were like you know pizzeria in Italy or something like that. But I just connected in my two seconds with adventure. Yeah, stuff. you know that that's that's interesting. A lot, a lot of, of restaurants have a lot of landscapes from the particular country that they're a restaurant for Italian, Greek, yeah. Uh, yeah. French, so yeah. forth. Yeah. And it brings you to that time and place. So this feels exotic to you. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I in could, a way. Yeah. I could see it in the living room or, you know, maybe even a bedroom because it's, there is a pleasant nature to it. Mm. So it's very pleasant. So, yeah. And I, I like the, that last little bit, that pleasant nature, maybe the kind of mood that's being set up by this painting. And I think a lot for me, when I'm thinking of artworks, I think of the mood that it evokes in a certain room. Mm -hmm. um, you, we, you've described a lot of um, how the content can help with the function of the room, whether it's in the bedroom or in your home office or in, in the, the living room. And um, Mary Lean talked a little bit about how some of her values are demonstrated and, and put on display for herself and others mm -hmm. in the artworks. Mm -hmm. And, and so this one is more like here's here's a vibe a vibe yeah it's a good way to put it. okay now i think we're somewhat running out of time so we there's a lot of there's subjects like what about buying target walmart art tying the room together i think those are great and i have nothing against those i'm not arguing that you need to turn your house into a gallery like mine this is kind of like closing thoughts before we get to this real quick um you i don't think we need to have you don't you don't have to have a gallery like mine I think you should consider to having a few of these and maybe inspiring yourself a little bit by ch like challenging yourself to explore art for the purpose of finding stuff for your house. That's very meaningful. Uh, if you want to have movie posters and stuff like uh, that, that's fine. You know, I have a little there, bit of there is there's like that. a what is a Venn diagram yeah. of this is personally meaningful. This is from the original artist. It fits the room. It's something that has a yeah. nice vibe to it. And then right in between, there's like the perfect artwork that kind of ties the room together and is also appropriate for the function of the room. It's yeah. So there's I, finding I the perfect artwork is going to be hard. And now yeah. you want us to pick out an artwork that's going to go behind you? Yeah, there's, there's so much to consider. And we could, you know, maybe we'll even talk about this again because like we didn't even talk about like, what about movie posters? And what, like, how do you, you know, should you do that? Shouldn't you? Or, or how much or whatever? So selecting this last painting real quick. Mm -hmm. So I did, when we first talked about this, I did not have any idea of what I would put here. And then I did come up with an idea. Um, Apollo Zeus, thank you for the um, super chat. And Mary Aline asked a question, what kind of food do you serve? So I have not had as many uh -huh. um, social events that I'd like to have. I would definitely be leaning towards steak, a good steak. I cook a really good steak. So don't tell me it. you're going to have paintings of cattle. Yeah, right, your... cattle. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Um, so, yeah, but I'll have to think about that a little bit more. Now, here, the, con the, pro the issue I was having with this one. So this is obviously a signing of the declaration. I know some of it may be cut off for you. Mm -hmm. Or no, it looks like it's good. But this is the signing of the declaration. Um, and it's, you know, for me, I, I, when I was looking for stuff behind me, this is stuff that I, you know, not only for podcasting, but also for working with, um, you know, people that I'm working with in business world and things like that. And when I'm zooming with them, so what do I want to have? Like, I don't want to have like, you know, a big boobed woman right here, like Dido and Didi, Dido and Ananias, like I showed you before, like, that's a little bit, just not the right message that I'm trying to send to people. I, I love this. I do love this painting. I think it fits for me. I like the studiousness of it and the, the collaboration and working on this important document, yada, yada, yada. But there's one personal one that I came up with um, for. Wait, what do you mean other, by personal one? A, a painting that, you know, when I was looking through paintings and I thought about like, what do I want to yeah. not only convey to other people, but that means something okay. to me okay. that's important that, that, you okay. know, whether it ties the room together or not, as you all may have noticed, is not my chief concern. I don't care, <laughs> to be honest, you personally. got no style. You got no style. I got style, no style. Okay. I just got, you know, classic painting on the mind. So now I don't know if you had any last questions before we revealed this, but the, the, what I have selected and I will buy for it. Okay. So let me get this straight. So the room is your studio. It's my office. The, yeah. 
it's yeah. your office, but it's also something that's more prominently displayed for the public than it yeah. is for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's more. And it, so it's kind of, here's my brand. Here's what I want to project about myself that you're kind of displaying here primarily. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely. Thank you, Free Trade, for the SEK45, whatever that, I don't know if that translates to. But. So yes, thank you, Luke. Keep, um, keep going. I apologize. Nope. That, that's Swedish it. Swedish Okay. So yeah, that, those are the main things. Um, and I was reminded of a deep value that I have you know, and, and fitting with the theme of founding fathers, oh. a founding father that I think is neglected. And I did a show about this on IRC UK not too long ago. And he's one that I've read his biography. I've read about this particular event in his view. And I feel a personal connection as a human so, to his value and what he does. And are you ready? For the I'm ready. It is this gentleman. Uh, who knows who this gentleman is? <laughs> Does anybody know? I know you do, Luke. So we, don't, we probably don't have time to play this game, unfortunately. We have just a couple minutes. But So who is it, Luke? Well, um, I saw right him at the there. Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. <laughs> He's got to be is, in Boston. This is Paul sure. Revere. This is this Paul is Revere. Paul Revere. And I love the painting because the, when I study him, read his poem by Longfellow, which I love his poem by the, the Longfellow poem, uh, Paul Revere's Ride. We think of him in that image of just writing and screaming out yeah, about yeah, yeah. The, the British, the British are, coming, are coming, the British are the coming, the redcoats are coming, or whatever yeah. you want to say. And that's a very a great image of him. And it's heroic and it's brave and it's inspiring. And, you know, watch my episode on that. I talk about how Longfellow used that to, to, to encourage the Northerners to fight again, uh, like they did in the revolution. But he, there's so much more to him. And what I love about this painting, why I want it here, besides he's probably my favorite, like I love Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, but I don't see myself as them. I think they're the great heroes that I respect. I see myself more as a Paul Revere type person. Like I just, I just see myself as him more. He's a great salesman. He's an advocate. He's a leader. He, he helped to, he was called the Mercury of the revolution, the Hermes of the revolution, because he was basically at a time when there were all these different groups going on. He was the one that knew everybody. And so when he ran down and told people, he knew who to talk to. Cause it's not like it's today where you just run down the street. I mean, these, you know, farms are far apart. Point is I really connect with him. I, I even love how he's not looking at his work, right? He's a silversmith and I've had this experience so much. And it's one of the interesting conflicts of my life is he's a silversmith. And he's known for not being the great silver. His father is known as being a great silversmith. When you look at Paul Revere stuff, he's a good, he, they always say he's good, but flawed. And I think part of it and what I always connect with is like, it's because he had such big things on his mind. He was trying to change the whole fucking world. You know, he was part of that whole thing. And so, yeah, he wasn't as meticulous with his silversmithing as he should have been because he was, you know, fighting for the new world. I just, I love that. I love that so much. I think that's me to some degree. Um, one aspect of it that I like is it looks like he's pausing in his work to look up at me, to interact with me and mm -hmm. say, hmm, what do you have to say is very interesting, Luke. And so yeah. I can imagine you kind of having that same kind of attitude with whomever you're interacting with, even me on this podcast saying being thoughtfully attentive like he is. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to choose. Um, you know, we have, a, there's so much to talk. We have still people commenting. You ride a horse, Apollo. That's what Apollo asked me if I ride a horse. Like, he does. Here. No. He does. Just, you know. <laughs> I have, I don't. Poor horse. Um, so there's, oh, thanks. So there's, a, <laughs> I have a special war horse. Um, so there, there's, there's just a lot. When you select artwork, everybody, one, start with Luke's book, go to touchingtheart.com because that's, even though we said there's some places, you know, like that painting, I would definitely have in my house, right? Mm -hmm. there, so there are paintings that I would not choose in there, but it's great to have it in a book so you can open it up and share with your friends when you're ready because these are b beautiful prints. Oh, I like that. When you're ready, when you're yeah. ready to share them. When, it, when you become, when you're at that stage in your relationship where you become vulnerable enough to share certain artworks. Yeah, that's like, I love that. And then, um, but then there's stuff that might help you. It's like, you know, I want a big version of this right here. 
right? Like I would love this to be massive right now. So there's so much to talk about. We're probably got, you know, it's been an hour. Uh, it's been a good hour, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and, you know, Luke, last word before we take off. Oh, this is a lot of fun. It flew fun. by like Paul Revere in the night. I know. There's so much to talk about. Let's do this again. Um, so thank you, everybody. That was a great show. No, you know, you're not going to see Paul Revere next time, but you'll see him soon. <laughs> I haven't bought him yet. Uh, okay. But thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.